The Pale Door is a Western horror movie about two brothers in an outlaw gang that attempt to pull off a train heist. Only the heist goes bad, and what they find out is in the train, as opposed to a ton of money, is a girl locked up in a trunk. During the heist, one of the brothers gets injured, and so they're forced to free the girl and make a bargain with her where if she takes them back to her town for medical attention, um, they'll let her live or they'll free. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what the bargain was, to be perfectly honest, but they basically, I don't know if there really was a bargain. It was basically just they, they kind of get her to, to, to take them back to her town. When they arrive back in town, surprise, surprise, the town is full of witches. The Pale Door is um, an interesting movie in that I know this movie's a low budget. I don't know what the, I tried to find out what the actual budget was, but I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't find online where the, what the budget was. So if you know what the budget was, let me know. But it really tries to bite off a bit more than it can chew. Everything is a little too low budget to really sell it. And it really swings for the fences. So I give it a lot of credit for swinging for the fences, the problem is it just, there's a look and feel to it that doesn't quite work. Now, it's essentially a low budget version of uh, From Dust Till Dawn. I don't know what kind of witches they are there because these witches kind of act more like vampires. So I don't know, they do cast spells and things like that, but they really seem more like vampires than they do witches where they're eating people and. They really sort of appear like vampires as opposed to witches, but whatever. For the, for the sake of the argument, we'll say, yep, they're witches. I give them a lot of credit because they chose... Everyone in front of the camera did a good job, and they chose some really good sort of character actors to be in this movie. You've got Pat Healy, you've got Bill Sage, you've got uh, Melora Walters. There's a lot here that works in front of the camera. Stan Shaw, Tina Parker... The problem is really that I have with it is everything sort of behind the camera. It's a problem when your sets look like they were made in, in someone's backyard. Like this entire movie feels like it was shot in someone's backyard. I know it's supposed to be the Wild West. It's supposed to be, I guess, Arizona or New Mexico. I'm not, they don't really mention where it's supposed to be, but all the grass is carefully manicured. <laughs> everything looks like us everything looks like a front like it's just been recently built and i i know it's low budget but that's a tough thing to get by when you're doing westerns if you're doing a western you really got to go minimal 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 build one thing and then that's it but they tried to really build an entire town and it comes off looking like it was just in someone's backyard and i and i know that's tough because i do understand it's a low budget film but there are things that you can do where you can manipulate the script in order to, to kind of change that a bit. And I, I think they, they would have benefited from that. The script, for the most part, is, is decent. It's not amazing, but it, it actually is better than you would think if you just say, oh, it's a low-budget remake of uh, From Dust Till Dawn. It actually does do some things that are interesting. The script is, is decent. It moves the plot along very well. There's a few little twists and turns, not much. It, it, fairly, it goes fairly straightforward. I have a couple pet peeves from a low-budget film standpoint, and they, they all kind of rear their head in this movie, and, and that unfortunately really held me back on this. The lighting in this movie drove me up a wall. I don't know, and I once again, and I say it again, yes, it's a low-budget movie. I totally understand that. But there are times in this movie where there are legitimate spotlights in the background. And you can sometimes, there are sometimes you can literally see spotlights coming through the window. The moonlight is the brightest moonlight I've ever seen in my life. There are uh, inconsistencies with the way some of the outdoor stuff is lit, where you're seeing the face of a church and we're getting hit with a bright light in the front. And we're also getting hit with a bright light in the back, which presumably one of those is moonlight. I don't know what the other light's supposed to be. And I, I know it's low budget, but, you know, if anything, you, if you're going to go low budget, then you got to scale things down where, okay, we gotta we got to maximize the lighting that we have and make it 
darker and make it more moody and make it a little bit more interesting in the light as opposed to, well, we've got these three spotlights, so we're just going to blast them out. To me, it just it, it ruins the atmosphere of the movie, especially when you're getting into like horror stuff. They're inside of a brothel at one point, which is supposed to be lit by lanterns and candlelight. But it is the brightest brothel ever. Like, it, it looks like a department store. Um, and that is just something that is just a planning problem. That is not a low-budget problem. That is a planning problem. I mean, unless for some reason all you could afford were gigantic lights. But that seems a little crazy to me. And so that was one of my pet peeves, where it's like... Lighting was a real problem for me in this movie, where it's just nothing about it looked authentic to what the scene is trying to set, and that's a shame. The second thing that really bummed me out, which is a pet peeve, is music. There is, I don't think, I don't think there is one frame of this movie that does not have music under it, and I, I just, that really bothers me, because you know, music is such a great tool in filmmaking. It's an amazing thing that can elevate your scene. But if it's overused, it just feels like it's a crutch. Like when you're watching it on the editing bay and you're just thinking, the scene's not working, what can we do? Well, let's add music. And if a scene can't exist without music in some fashion, then, it, then music is not the problem. And by simply layering music in for the entire movie isn't going to solve anything. And so for me, when I hear music throughout the entire thing, it makes me think of like a, a Disney afternoon movie or something where it's just they're trying to keep people's attention with just music. And the scene should be able to live without music. And so when I, whenever I, I run into a, mu a movie where there's music wall to wall, it just gets exhausting. And then the music lose all all efficacy, and then you're just not then you're not really doing a service to the movie. So that's the second pet peeve I have, which this movie does. The third pet peeve I have with this movie, and and once again this is all behind the camera stuff, is the camera work. The camera work in this movie is mostly handheld, and it's all mostly shaky handheld camera. And there's some that's not, but for the most part, it seems like 75% of this movie is handheld and somewhat shaky. Even when there's small, even when there's quiet scenes between two characters that are just having a conversation, the camera is still kind of shaking. And I don't understand that method. Like, once again, it kind of goes back to the music thing, where if you don't feel like your scene is working script-wise or, or performance-wise or whatever adding music or a shaky camera or all these little tricks, it's not going to save it. Figure out why it's not working and work that out. Get a better camera angle. Do something with it. But just simply applying shake to a camera does not make it more interesting. And this movie does it through, in, through the entire thing. All the stuff that happens in front of the camera still works really well. I think the performances are all good and they all the actors do as good of a job as they can with what they have. I really just think that the the behind the camera stuff kind of did them a disservice. Some of the editing is a little quirky and a bit disjointed at times. And some of the choices for camera angles and the way they kind of cut between wides and mediums and close-ups. I just, I, I feel bad for the actors because I feel like they all did their job and they all kind of took this material, which was solid, and put in a performance that was worthy of the material they had. But I feel like the director and the cinematographer and the editor kind of let them down by shooting this in sort of a very bland way. They lit it kind of poorly. They had poor camera work. It wasn't edited particularly well. What could have been an interesting smaller lower budget version of From Dust Till Dawn ends up coming off looking cheap and feeling cheap despite the fact that there was some good talent here. Uh, I'll say the special effects are really well done. All the blood work is really well done. Some of the sequences uh, work in, in a way that maybe they probably shouldn't, but this could have been pretty solid 
instead it ends up looking cheaper than it should have. And like I said, I don't know what the budget was, but I know it was low budget, but I feel like instead of embracing your low budget and figuring out, okay, these are the things we can do, these are the things we can't do, let's take the things that we can do and make them great. But the problem is they didn't do enough on the back end side to make all that work. I'd give this movie a C minus. Let me know what you think.